Well, joining me now, a Talk TV trio, Isabel Oakshot, Richard Tice and Paula Roan Adrian. Richard, how has it come to this that companies now feel a desperate urge to impinge on the rest of us their own supposed values and beliefs, and if we veer from them, we're somehow evil? Well, I think we're absolutely seeing that if you go woke as a company, you will go broke. Mm. And you've read out lots of companies there who financially have suffered, and actually, NatWest and Coots will financially suffer from this. No question at all. Hopefully, the lesson to be learned out of this is we are possibly at peak wokeness. But the reason we've come to it, Piers, I think is because of weak leadership on the boards of directors mm. of these companies who have fallen for this stuff that has come from, yeah, from younger people underneath and they haven't had the courage to say, don't be daft, where's the common sense, stick to doing a good, you know, producing mm. a good product and selling it yeah, to Paula, customers it's that a bunch, buy I, I've seen this myself. I saw mm. it at ITV when I went through my exit from Good Morning Britain. Mm. A lot of the uh, aggro was driven internally by young wokies at ITV. Oh. I know you don't like the term, but let me explain what it means. No, people... I, I do like the term. I like the term woke. I support the term woke because I know what it means. What do you think I, it means? Uh, well, it's not what I think it means. It's what I know it means. No, no. It's what, and it's, I know it, what it used to mean. I wrote well, a book about well, it. I wrote a whole if, book if about it. you know it. what it used number one to bestseller, mean, right? it still I know means what the woke, same thing. I know what woke used to mean, raising awareness for social thing. and racial injustice. Right. I get it, right? Okay. That is not what today's woke means. Well... That, Today's that, woke that, is the new that fascism. May be, that may be your misunderstanding, but I understand... Today's woke, woke is what Coots have just done to Nigel Farage. No. Well, and by the way, Coots, no, well, and I'm a, hang on, to, to let Nigel. me ask you a question. Okay. I'm a Coots customer, too. I'm not happy about this. I rang them yesterday to have a chat with them about it. They wouldn't even talk to me about it because they couldn't confirm that Nigel Farage is a customer, right? Because apparently he breaches that's his privacy. That's data protection, is it? I mean, right, except they're, bri but they're briefing itself. left, right and centre yeah. to the media so about data Nigel Farage. Is, so, so data my, Protection Act is also... But here's my point. Is it? The point I made yesterday, I'm going to make it again. I have a lot of what people think are controversial opinions. I don't have to think they're very controversial. But why are my controversial opinions allowed by Coots? And why are Nigel Farage is not? And why, if you believe in free speech, if you're a genuine liberal, would anyone be happy, anyone be happy, with someone like Farage, regardless of his politics, having his bank account taken away? Because I don't get it. So, so Nigel Farage knows better than anybody that we live and work in a capitalist society. As a private bank, they it's have decided... As a, as a bank, they have decided that their customer... It's undesirable. But did you read why? It's it undesirable. I, I did. It's Isabel, come, uh, come it's back in a moment. More I, I know, but... Yeah, Isabel, you, you can respond to what she says. ..has decided that he's undesirable and therefore no longer want to... But did you read the reasons why? I did read the reasons why. All of the them. reasons why. I did Because it was actually why. shocking. And, and do you know what... A lot of biggest... it was down to his... He likes Novak Djokovic. I mean... How well, on that basis, most of the, of the people on Twitter irony, last week have to be banned. You know the irony of this is? There's two. The first is, as I understand it, and you'll correct me, Richard, if we were still in the EU, oh, here we go. that no. wouldn't have been allowed to happen. <laughs> no, absolutely not. The nonsense. second <clears throat> thing is, why are we concerned about one millionaire when there are over oh, a million Paula. people Paula, Paula. who are right, low right. income status right. who cannot get access to bank accounts yeah. and, and oh, who cannot Paula, you and who cannot all right, Isabel, you and, and all right. suffer because of that. Oh, I mean, yeah. you say that's all right, but we're talking about one Here's man. Here's the truth. Here's right. the truth. Right. Over a million it, it, people it, who are struggling, Paula, who are suffering now. Just, Paula, this so was Keir Starmer that happened to you. just said the complete opposite. Oh, my goodness. You know perfectly well that it isn't just one millionaire. You know that this is the absolute tip of it and that loads of organisations and individuals are being debanked for their political what views. What I understand is what that I'd because like to of know, Nigel Farage, the Treasury has suddenly decided to no, just hang on, Paul, 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 When Paul, you're Paul, poor, Paul, when Paul, you are low income, when your status is not the same or considered to be the same as Nigel Farage, it, they it's don't It's completely care. the opposite. Right. There's, a, there's a Facebook care. page of 10,000 NatWest um, customers. Can I ask, Piers, how strongly do you feel about this issue? Pretty strongly, actually, because so, I think it doesn't matter whether you're on the left or the right... The idea that a bank is taking a form, a view about people based yeah. on their opinions, because there's no criminality attached to Farage that has been on earth. They couldn't point to any. A lot of it was he, he gets on with Donald Trump. He likes Novak Djokovic and all this kind of thing. So I thought it was completely. Ridiculous. I thought it was ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. So my question to you is, and this maybe you think it's a bit of a cheeky question. It's mm. only just occurred to me. Why don't you shut your account with? Well, them? I want to talk to them actually. 
I, mean, I do want to talk to you. Because I want it, to get... it is only by people like you doing that yeah. that organisations will realise that with customers Coots, are going to leave. I've been with Coots a very long time. They've always been very good to me. But I've got to say, I find this episode it deeply, is, deeply is. concerning. And, and for the boss of NatWest to say, you know, we should never have done this. Yeah, but a lot of your executives were involved in this. But, yes. but, but, but yeah, I've had accounts closed by Metrobank, by Tide. Being they wouldn't give me any lending being, as well. And, and just, but with, with cash in... For no reason. Really? They wouldn't tell me why. Yeah. Uh, with the Metro Bank, it was with re the Reform Party account. I gave a press conference at the time. They wouldn't give any reason whatsoever. I've submitted subject access requests. It'll be very interesting to see what they so say. So tell me something. It's got when nothing the, to do with they... Nigel. It's all to do... I, Tens and of thousands I agree of small businesses I agree with have you. had their this bank accounts shut. This isn't actually a story about Nigel no, Farage, and that is quite frustrating, that it has turned into a story about one man who's, whose feelings have been hurt. That no, 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 no. This is about, they lied. as I said, they over lied. a million people who have been they shut lied. out. Paula, they, they, they lied. They, hang on, let me, let me let, hang on. About. They briefed Simon Jack. They briefed Simon Jack at the BBC deliberately, and it turned out he was sitting next to the, this woman, the boss of that West the night before at a dinner, by coincidence, we don't know. Right? But they briefed him, and he put out that it was actually the real reason was financial. He didn't have enough money in his account. It turns out that is not true. And when you read the full account that. in The Telegraph about this, it turns out a major part of their thinking actually was about his political views, which, on the equates of Brexit, that's half the country. Right, so this idea that because he likes Trump and likes Djokovic, and you know, and and may have may or may not have known some Russian people, whatever, none of this is a good enough reason to kick off a, his account. A huge percentage of Coots's own customers will agree with Nigel on many, many of these yeah. issues. Mm -hmm. So, are they going to fire all of them? I mean, you but know, I would feel the same way if it was someone on the left, right? So I don't. I don't take yeah, a partisan position. Or... Too many people I see responding to the Farage story take a partisan position. Where if it, I always believe in swapping names, right? When you do a Biden story, imagine if it was Donald Trump right. and so on, and the, and the other way around, mm. and see how you'd feel. And if you feel the same way, that's your belief, right? Whereas it's and not a I partisan totally, position. And I can totally agree with you on that, which is why I say this is not a Nigel Farage story. It isn't, but it is being played out as if it's about. You know the most stupid about thing about Nigel it, Paula. Farage. You say that, but actually, at the end of their assessment as to why they were going to remove his account, they say we are aware this will be a PR problem. I know, <laughs> yeah, right? and, the and then they still do it, and then the boss of Nat of West, the, the over boss of Coots, has to issue a grovelling apology to Nigel Farage, this playing right into his hands, of course, mm, because yeah. he's a broadcaster and a politician. Of course, it empowers and helps him, but. That's frankly the price you pay when you do this kind of thing. And Paul, in a where country I like agree this with country. you, where I agree with you is it really sticks in the throat to hear Coots talking about inclusivity mm. when they are one him. of the most exclusive banking well, houses there are. Yeah. I mean that, I mean, that again, I just found that laugh. I mean, anyway, I will that... be talking to Coots, and it'll be an interesting Please. conversation because I think they only think I want to talk about Farage. Actually, I want to talk about myself. Thank you. Am I going to have to read? Am I going to read one of these reports about my views? Yes. And if not, actually, why not? Right. I mean, either be consistent or don't. But I get you know, on the program. I, I will ask the boss of Coots to come on. I'd love that. Uh, and, and I think they should. We'll have a proper conversation about what makes a reasonable person. Because actually, you should submit a subject access request from Coots about you. It'd be yeah. interesting reading. It would be interesting reading. <laughs> <laughs> would be interesting reading. <laughs> Maybe not, not, not be too hasty here, uh, Ty. Um, let's t um, you've, you've prompted this. Let's turn to weaponized incompetence. Women are starting to call out their men. The lack of responsibility over child, uh, uh, over household chores. With videos mentioning the term weaponized incompetence receiving one and a half or 148 million views on TikTok. Let's take a look. I'm going to show you guys what weaponized incompetence is. It's something my baby daddy loves to use against me very, very well. Last night I went to bed at like 10. I asked him, hey, can you please clean the bottles, right? If I were to ask him, hey, I thought I asked you to pick up the kitchen last night. Oh, well, you only told me to clean the bottles and I did clean the bottles. You didn't tell me to put the food away and you didn't tell me to clean up the rest of it. That's weaponized incompetence. He's playing stupid to basically win an argument. No, I mean, don't call me Nostradamus here, but I suspect <laughs> obviously you two uh, are a couple. Um, and I would imagine Richard is one of those that's probably quite guilty of weaponized incompetence. <laughs> <laughs> he, is, is um, he is tremendously competent in many respects. Um, but Household chores? But I have to, he's not bad on that, but I have to say when it comes to looking for things, the most cursory glance around a room mm. for, for a lost item results in nowhere to be found, mm. sorry, can't find it anywhere. And Paula, you'll relate to this. I do. You find it in about two seconds, yes. precisely where you told them it was. Yes. Any 
anything to say? Paula, to have you experienced weaponising competence? Uh, every I, day. I, I have experienced it. Clearly not in the last 14 years of a very, very blissful marriage, <laughs> but I have experienced it. But remember, we don't only see that type of behaviour at home. We also see it in the workplace, mm. and that... Uh, unfortunately causes significant issues in the workplace as well as... So if I leave my, like I take my suit off after the show tonight and just leave it lying around for Kerry, my brilliant yeah. uh, assistant, if I leave it for her to pick up, is that weaponised incompetence? Absolutely. Or, or if you, for example, um, just forget that uh, you were supposed to have uh, researched X, Y and Z and you expect one of the fantastic runners who work for you to compile a report for mm. you... You could have done that yourself. Richard, I mean, I'm, is there a grading here? Like, if you're the hunter and provider of the household... Oh, which I am, yeah. I'm the hunter You bring gatherer. in the big bucks, you work the long hours. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Are you entitled to down tools that's on the a, household? That's a big if. That's a big if. <laughs> are you entitled to basically be incompetent when it comes to that? I actually think that I'm going to adopt... I'm going to plead the fifth. Be I'm going to be American. careful, yeah. Because <laughs> I could get in serious trouble. May the record show Richard Size finally was shut up at the idea of <laughs> dipping his head over the parapet of weaponized. <laughs> incompetence, which says it all, you big doormat.